We're gonna test out a Napoli 4-3-3 for you. Let's just get into it. So this is another Sebastian 3 tactic. It is called the Napoli Champions 4-3-3 version 2, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is the final update for the Naples 4-3-3 version 2 with many modifications and settings made. Front court trident AF plus IF plus W. The IF on the, on the left uses the left foot and the winger on the right uses the right foot. There's no OI settings. Restore Spalletti's fast cutting style. That is all it says. There are some images uh, that they did very well, but I... That's all I got. So we're going to check this out. As you can see, it is a 4-3-3 positive mentality, Napoli style, uh, sweeper keeper in attack, a complete wing back on the attack on left and the right, a ball playing defender in the left and the right, a DM in support, box to box in support, and then a Mazala on the right in attack, an inside forward on attack, a winger on attack on the right, and then an advanced forward in attack up front. So it, a lot of players playing attack right now. In possession, you have attacking width is fairly wide, approach plays nothing, play out of defense, uh, passing direction is much shorter, tempo is higher, low crosses, work the ball in the box, run at defense and be more expressive. In transition, when possession has been lost, counter press, counter, and then roll it out, and then out of possession, a high press line of engagement, a higher defensive line, trigger press much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Now. How did this Spalletti tile tactic, or I don't, I actually don't know what Spalletti has been using lately, but how did this Napoli style tactic do? Well, as you can see, really well. Uh, another great 4-3-3, Tottenham at 75 points, higher than average, but still, I mean, I'm sure with a, some really good transfers in there, you could get that even higher. Uh, Man United at 79, you might be able to get there. Liverpool at 88 is a bit on the high side. Uh, to try and kind of aim for that. But Newcastle at 67 is pretty good. Wolves at 65 is definitely good. Everyone in Europe. So we're doing well so far. Tottenham schedule. A 1-4 loss to Manchester City. And then nothing up until that 0-3 against Manchester United. Uh, and that is at the tail end of December. You've got January not starting out all that great, I will say. I mean, you're starting out fine. But you've got two losses in January. You look like you're out against Wolves in the EFL Cup semifinals. Unfortunately for Wolves, you kick the crap out of them 5-0 at home. So you're continuing on to that up until the EFL Cup final where you lose out 2-3 to to Manchester United. Uh, FA Cup, you continue on. Champions League round of 16, a one all draw against Ajax and then a 3-1 win against Ajax. You're continuing on against Sevilla. You are continuing on against Bayern and you lose out to Liverpool. I mean, it's always Liverpool. It's always Liverpool. Two all penalty shootout. Uh, Champions League final, you do lose out. Where did the FA Cup, there you go. FA Cup fifth round, 2-3 against Southampton and you're done there. Newcastle doing fairly well in and of themselves. Liverpool 1-2 loss. A nice sea of points though, up until Manchester City. Tottenham, Brighton 1-2. Uh, Manchester United won five. So you continue on in the EFL Cup up until three, four loss to Manchester United. FA Cup smashing Burton Albion, but quarterfinals you're out in extra time against Southampton. Uh, I mean, overall, I mean, you have some really nice runs. Then you get into some spotty territory, but overall still fantastic. Wolves definitely a lot spottier, as you would expect. I mean, they're out another continue on in everything. Second half of the season. Uh, Premier League loss, EFL Cup semifinals against Tottenham. We saw that. An absolute thrashing after they kicked the crap out of Tottenham 4-1 to at home. But FA Cup corners, Manchester United, just a bogey team this year for that, uh, for the FA Cup. But a fantastic April. Look at that. Man City. That is a great win right there. But unfortunately, May, they're not able to kick it off too much. A win in Aston Villa. Uh, and then a draw against Newcastle. And that's it. For Tottenham transfer-wise, Benacer, a fantastic pickup, 43 million. How did he do this season? Uh, 14 in the Premier League, four goals, four assists, 701. A fantastic effort right there. Uh, outs, same as uh, 1.6 for Lloris goes to El Saad. 22.5 for Ben Davies to PSG. I think that may be the first or second time we've seen that. Newcastle picking up a lot of players we've already seen. Ed, uh, Edwards, Pereira, Kennedy, Drewsbury Hall, Julian Ryerson for Borussia Dortmund on loan. Uh, and then outs, Mark Gillespie is the only one. 
For Wolves, Miguel Crespo from Fenerbahce for five and a half is the only in. They just don't bring anyone in. Daniel Potens out for six, so that's paid for automatically. And then Levy Kisa out for 7K, 700K. Squad-wise for Tottenham, looking pretty nice with a sea of green there. Newcastle squad, a bit less green, but still not too bad. Wolves, about the same as Newcastle. Sarabia getting in there with a 720. 716 for Cunha. Eh, they're okay. Data Hub Tottenham, very good in attack. Shaky in defense. Wow, that, that defense is definitely... You really need to pick up a lot better with that. However, the attacking side is absolutely phenomenal. Newcastle, shaky defensively. as you, I mean, better than Tottenham was, uh, but very good in attack. You still you got some really high numbers there. Uh, shot percentage and things like that could be a little bit better, but overall, still great job by Newcastle. Wolves, again, attacking-wise, doing very well. Uh, slightly better than Tottenham, maybe, but still defensively shaky. You can definitely tell that. Stats-wise, most goals, Wolves with 87, Tottenham with 84, Newcastle 77. So all three teams doing really well. Liverpool leading the way are down in fifth with 76 goals. That's kind of interesting. Fewer shots, Tottenham, Newcastle, and Wolves all up there. Uh, most possession, Tottenham. Dribbles made all three teams. Nice to see, finally. Finally, a dribbling possession or di dribbling tactic. Fewest conceded, nobody. Most shutouts, nobody. Yeah, sadly, their defensive efforts are just not great at all. Very weak. But best pass completion, Tottenham and Wolves. Most shots for all three teams. Wolves really the standout attacking side for some reason. And then most points per game, Newcastle, or Tottenham in third, Newcastle in fifth, and Wolves in seventh. Most goals, Harry Kane with 25, Isaac with 24, Cunha with 18. So the top three anyway are doing really well in the top five of the league this season. Pablo Sarabia with most assists with 16. Son and Porro in there as well. Most player of the match awards, Isaac, Cunha, and Kane in there four. It's kind of interesting. Kane gets the goals, but not the player of the match awards. Best pass completion, nobody. I mean, we've seen that. Most dribbles made, uh, Aitnori in target. Uh, few is conceded. Larissa in there before he was sold. Fraser Forster in there. Uh, most shutouts, Nick Pope. Most tackles won nobody. Most key passes, Trippier and Sarabia as usual. Most shots, Isaac with 119. Erling Holland with 195. I know we've seen it up in the 200s, but man, come on. Cunha with 94. That's And that's still the top, not even 10. And as we finish out, as always, with our top goal scorers and everything in the all competitions, Harry Kane with 42 freaking goals. I know that Tottenham play a lot of games with the Champions League and everything, but man, that is a lot. 726 highest average rating for him, too. I actually would have hoped for a little bit more, but I mean, that's still fantastic. 18 assists for Son, and then eight player of the match awards for Kane. Wow. Newcastle, Isaac with 32 goals, 738 average rating. See, that's where I would expect Kane to be. Uh, but, I mean, it is Kane. So, <laughs> Trippier with 13 assists, and then Isaac with 10 player of the match awards. And then Wolves, Cunha with 19 goals. Sarabia, 7-2-1, highest average rating. Pretty nice there. 23 assists. That dude is fantastic. Jose Saad, 92% pass completion. <laughs> I mean, they're always up there. But Cunha with 7 player of the match awards. I have to say, overall, the league table shows it all. I mean, they did a fantastic job. We have definitely seen them all on higher point totals to a certain degree. But as a standard 4-3-3 tactic, uh, we haven't seen a lot of this style, uh, a lot of these high numbers. And it's really nice to see because a lot of the times we have it, you've got like five up front, three in the back, and a midfielder or two. Uh, but this is a standard 4-3-3 for the most part. And it's nice to see these all three teams doing really well. So take it if you want a standard 4-3-3. Uh, play it how your team is. Again, always play to your strengths of your team. But if you want a 4-3-3, this is a fantastic place to start. So anyway, that is it for me, Sefian FM for the Football Manager Blog Channel saying thank you as always for watching. Take care and enjoy.